Have you ever been in a situation where you look up online for a build, get introduced to the super powerful high damage build just to go into Remnant 2, equip the items and get insta slammed by a boss on the first hit? Hell, I might even be the person who led you down that path. And as an apology, today we're here to try to amend that. Today I'm going to present to you two different versions of a build that will aim to strike a balance between high damage, high survivability and easy improved dodging. And best of all, for most items I'll be using, they can be changed for second bests. Although that might not be necessary, as most items we'll use today are very easy to achieve. By the time you complete your first campaign, you should have all the items we're going to be using in this builds, with a few exceptions. So let's talk a little bit about how these builds will work. So our goal with these builds is going to be to be able to increase as much damage reduction as possible with the least amount of items as possible, so that we can save up some slots for damage. So instead, we'll try to boost up our damage reduction as much as possible on the back of one ring for the first version and just one ring and an amulet for the second version. The ring for the first version is the Bright Steel Ring. So this is the one item out of the entire version 1 build that can take more than one campaign run to get. To unlock the Bright Steel Ring, you must complete 15 different biomes. And then, this ring will become available for sale by Reggie for a thousand scrap. Personally, I'm not exactly sure what constitutes as a biome, but all I know is that after I beat my first run on Nightmare and ran several adventures farming other items, I the time I decided to ever play my first apocalypse campaign, I already had this ring unlocked a long time ago. So moving on, we use the bright steel ring to allow us to equip as much armor as possible backed up by several traits that will add to our character survivability, while being able to maintain a light roll due to the ring's effect. And just right off of the back of this one ring, we're able to pump up a bunch of damage reduction while leaving lots of space for increasing our DPS. And as for the second version of this build, the concept is about the same. We want to have as much damage reduction as possible without sacrificing damage. However, the second version will require the full moon circle amulet and the ring of omens, which in case you didn't know, the combination of these two items enables our character to do the infamous misstep, which has a much higher invincibility window, which in turn makes us far more likely to stay alive. And thankfully, it doesn't cost too many items either. And as you can see, you can also misstep with ultra heavy gear. So the concept will be fairly similar just with a few tweaks. So let's get on with the builds here. For archetypes we use the alchemist combined with the invader. The alchemist is a wildly powerful archetype whose prime perk can be abused to increase our health, armor, movement speed, evades and our recoils, all depending on the choices we make. And the invader on the other hand makes our dodging life a lot easier, even giving us automatic dodges if that's something we decide to use. Not to mention all of the damage buffs by both archetypes. Both of these make for very well balanced classes both defensively and offensively. And as for items, we'll start with the first version, the bright steel ring version. Starting off with the primary weapon I'm using in this build, the starter automatic rifle, the black Blackmall AR-47. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like this is a really underappreciated weapon. This weapon's damage output is crazy, the accuracy is good, the rate of fire is high, it's great for charging up mods and pumping our mutator of choice and many other reasons. I figured I'd go with a starter weapon for this build and I've got to say, the black ball has got to be my favorite, but feel free to use any other weapon of your choice if you don't want to use the black ball. For the weapon mod, we opt in for the corrosive shots, as making use of that 15% crit chance is more than a welcome change. On top of that, bullets apply corrosive, which will do damage over time on our target, and any enemy that is suffering from the corrosive debuff also takes 10% extra damage. So overall, it all adds up to quite a decent damage increase. And as for mutator, we go with the typical range DPS momentum mutator. It's especially great with a black mob because we're able to max out our momentum stacks dramatically faster than a semi-automatic weapon. Now moving over to the handgun, we use the Nebula, the sole reason being for its glorious mod. The Nebula is a weapon that can essentially do a crap ton of damage without even ever having to be equipped, as its mod works almost like a summon where it just goes around damaging all sorts of enemies near you and the mod is able to dish out several hundred DPS on its own. Not only that, but it can also hit weak spots on our enemies, 
case. For the mutator, since we use the nebula mostly for its mod, we use the harmonizer to increase our mod damage and on top of that allow us to regenerate our corrosive shot mod a little bit faster. As for the melee weapon, I recommend using a melee weapon that has a ranged charge attack. It is not necessary, but it sure helps. That can be either the world's edge, the krell axe, the huntress spear, or the hero sword. The reason for this is that we'll want to equip the transference mutator on one of these melee weapons to help us recover ammo if we ever require it. This is definitely not necessary, but it helps quite a bit. As for armor, we'll equip as much armor as we possibly can, which in this case is the Leto Mark II all around with the exception of the gloves, because the Labyrinth gloves for some reason contain way more armor. Now moving on to the Relic, this is really up to you. Personally, I've always used the Enlarged Heart since I got it, as I find the 5 Relic uses to be plenty enough and the Enlarged Heart always heals you back to full and its use is extremely quick. But then comes the Relic Fragments. Personally, I use an ideal range DPS combination of crit chance, crit damage, and rate of fire to increase our range DPS as much as possible. I've also dabbled with changing out the rate of fire for damage reduction or extra health, but I found that it plays a very little role in how many hits we can take in Apocalypse. Usually with this build, we're able to take several hits or one to two hits from very strong hit mechanics. Yet, even if we pump out our defenses in the fragments, it still won't stop us from getting one hit from one hit mechanic. So I figured we're better off with just damage increases. However, feel free to mess around with these if you want your character to lean towards a more survivability approach or a more damage approach. Now moving over to the amulet, with this version, we're a bit more free to pump up damage here or extra defenses if you want to go that route. But personally, I like to use the Ank of Power. Unlike the Abrasive Whetstone, the Ank of Power can be one of those amulets we just equip and forget about it. Whereas the Abrasive Whetstone is something we constantly need to keep in the back of our heads, trying to make sure our enemies always have a bleed uptime on them. Also, the Nebula can't really cause bleed, so yeah. For this reason, we use the Ank of Power. Moving down to the ring, of course, there's the Bright Steel ring. And as for the other three, here we have a lot of flexibility. But as I said earlier, we will focus on being a proper, well-rounded character. So here we go. We'll grab the two best range DPS rings, which in this case is the Probability ring and the Xenia's Malice. And as for a third option, we'll make sure our survivability is even easier by including the Ring of Diversion, which makes our dodges an even easier experience. Now, before we move on to trade, let's talk about the items for the second build version. Starting off with the armor, we've got the same as version 1. For the relic, we can also use the same relic or we can swap out for either Ruined Heart or Tranquil Heart. The reason being, this build will have a lot of lifesteal, which in turn, we might not always need to worry too much about relic. The fragments, however, follow the same idea as version 1. As for the primary, for this build, I like to use the Nightfall weapon. Even after this weapon got nerfed, it still truly shines as one of the best weapons in the entire game. Its mod triggers infinite ammo, automatic shooting, but also a whole lot of life stealing. So I love it for this build, but feel free to change this to whatever you prefer. And once again, for the mutator, we use the momentum. The melee and the secondary weapons, however, follow the same rule as version 1. And moving over to the right side, we of course use the full moon circle amulet and the ring of omens. For the other three rings, I once again use roughly the same rings. So overall, mostly just the weapon, amulet, and a ring gets swapped out most of the time, at least for me. Now moving over to traits, I keep it fairly similar. Both versions use Swiftness, Fortify, Vigor, Spirit, and bark skin. These last 18 points is where they vary. For the bright steel version, I like to put 10 points into footwork and 8 in endurance as we'll be using lots of stamina. And as for the ring of omens version, we use 10 points on siphoner and the remaining 8 points in footwork. So that's the difference between the two and although it doesn't feel like much, in gameplay you definitely feel the vast difference between the two builds. And speaking on gameplay, let's quickly go over a boss fight with each one of the versions so we know exactly how to use it once we get down to the actual combat. So this time around, we'll be fighting two of the hardest bosses in the game, Venom and Cancer. So let's get straight to it. Let's start off with the version 1 build. All right, so we're going to be taking on Cancer here. I am going to be swapping out the Xenia's Malice for the Burden of the Gambler um, because Cancer, I find it to be a little bit difficult to hit his weak spots, so I prefer to use Burden of the Gambler. So this is my second attempt against him. Um, I messed up on the first one for having Xenia's Malice. I actually much prefer Burden of the Gambler. This should be a bit easier. 
Dodging is extremely easy with the Ring of Diversion that increases our iframes by quite a lot. On top of the untouchable trait from Invader, this becomes quite easy. So as you can see, I'm also using the Verdant Tea Concoction to keep our stamina quite high so that stamina is not an issue. As you can see, it really isn't. Every time I dodge, I lose about 20% stamina. And I like to use the wormhole ability here uh, to keep a distance between me and the boss. Depending on the boss, I might, it might vary. Some bosses is not worth to use wormhole, uh, but most of the bosses, it is quite useful. So I'm messing up quite a lot here, but as you can see, we do not lose that much health per hit. So much so that I don't heal after every hit, uh, which you usually do in Apocalypse since the hits are so strong. But in this case, the hits are only taking about 25-30% of our health. Of course, he hasn't hit me with anything too crazy yet. But we already got him down to about 40%. Burden of the Gambler is working its way up. So let's pop a mod. As you can see, I never even have to use the Nebula. And another thing you should pay attention, I don't know if you've been paying attention, but I'm constantly paying attention to the ground uh, so that I know where the nearest ammo pickups are. Uh, you could technically build for ammo reserves from the Gunslinger archetype trait, but I find it to not be worth it. i much rather just kind of work the battlefield and pick up the ammo pickups uh, as I go. I don't find it to be necessary to sacrifice 10 points for extra ammo when I can just pick it up in fights, but for some people it might be worth it, so uh, you may want to do that, but that's up to you. And we got him down to 10%. Easy dodge. Easy dodge. And we should be able to get him here. As you can see also our mods is back up quite often. I think that's due to the Black Maul. The Black Maul is just so good at it. Let me heal here so I don't sacrifice my myself. I've been reluctant to use Relic as well because he is running the Empathy suffix, which means he heals every time I heal. So and that's it. That was quite an easy one. Easy to dodge. Stamina was not an issue. And we are quite strong in damage and in resistance. Let's go on to Venom now. Alright, so this time around, I'm not going to be using the Verdant Tea Concoction. I'm going to be using the uh, Recoil one, just to make it a little bit easier, since I don't need stamina this time around. Pop a couple of cooldowns here, and time to burst them down in the early phase. This should be a whole lot easier to dodge with Misstep. Boop. Yeah, it should be a whole lot easier to dodge with Misstep, because the invincibility frames is much easier longer than uh, what I was using with the bright steel ring. This should be quite easy to dodge and I'm, I'm also kind of curious how much damage we'll take from Venom. This is my first... Oh, that took about half my health. This is my first uh, go at him. Um, but I, I'm pretty confident that we can take him on the first go. Alright, so that left the decoy behind. He's a little bit distracted with that. Do a little bit of damage output here. This is, by the way, another advantage with invaders, the decoys. It actually keeps the boss... Oh, alright, that's quite close. It actually keeps the boss quite busy. And there's a, another decoy for you, buddy. Life steal back, so I don't have to use another relic. Having a hard time hitting that chest. Oh boy, I'm kind of struggling to get these dodges off. Alright, wormhole out of that. Which, by the way, definitely use lots of wormhole. I absolutely love it. Use frenzy dust. Oh, I popped the mod before the frenzy dust. Should be good though. That's a lot of damage. Pop the Nebula mod again, and we gotta dodge the Orbital Strike. The Nebula will do its damage while I'm just gonna worry about dodging here and making sure I stay alive. Get a couple of these staves out of the battlefield so they don't hurt me. And we're back. 
off to do some damage. We're running low on ammo here. Let me pick up a couple of these. And we're good. We're back to pretty much full ammo. Oh my boy. Woo! Okay, I almost messed that up. See if I can lifesteal back up. Dodge and dodge. Wow, how the hell did that hit me? All right, let me pop Dreadwalker here. Get this health back to full. We're good. Lots of damage. Lots of struggling to dodge. <laughs> and another orbital strike. All right, no problem. Let's just dodge this. We don't have Nebula mod back up, so we'll just worry about uh, keeping my distance. With swiftness, I'm just easily able to outwalk these. Let's see if we can do the final push here. Boy. So, <laughs> the good news that I'm getting hit this much is it gives you a point of reference of how much we can actually take. As you can see, we can take two major hits from Venom and still not die on Apocalypse, which is quite a lot. Get my health back up and I think I'm going to make the last push here. Last push, last push, dodge this, and we're good. He's dead. Come here. And there we go. It's a bit easier for me to do it with the misstep, I felt like. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys have a good one. Peace.